In the previous video, I defined partial derivatives. This was the first way to understand the extension of derivatives to multivariable functions. I talked in that video mostly about the technical definition, but what does a partial mean? It means the rate of change in that one variable. For a scalar field in x and y, the partial in x measures how fast the scalar changes as x changes, and the partial in y measures how fast the scalar changes as y changes. The partials are the individual rates of change. I would like something a bit more holistic if I can, and it turns out there are a number of holistic ideas, and I'll spend this video and a good part of the following week's worth of videos talking about these extensions. In all of these new ideas, the constructions are actually built out of the partials. So the question is, how do I put the partials together to make some meaningful holistic measure about how a scalar field changes? The first idea is the gradient. In a field that depends on n variables, there are n partial derivatives. But if there are n partial derivatives, I can make a vector of them, which will be a vector in Rn, that is, in the domain. This is called the gradient vector of the scalar field. This triangle symbol is spoken nabla, so that the gradient is called nabla f. What does the gradient do? It should be some measure of change, but it is, it is a direction. So what direction does the gradient point in? The gradient points in the direction of greatest increase, and similarly, the negative of the gradient points in the direction of greatest decrease. How does this all work? Well, here's a contour plot from an earlier video where the elevation was high in the middle and decreased outwards. At any point, the direction of greatest increase is an arrow that points towards the center, towards the top of the hill. This is the gradient. It is a vector in the domain. As I move in the domain, the function changes. If this were an elevation, the gradient would point in the direction of the steepest upward slope the fastest way to get to the top of this hill. If I draw a few gradients here, you can notice that all the arrows I draw are perpendicular to the contour lines. This is true in general. The contour lines are the places where the scalar field is constant, where it doesn't change. And it makes sense that the direction of greatest change is in fact perpendicular to these lines. Here's an example calculation. This is a scalar field in three dimensions with the domain of x and y in the interval from 0 to root 3 and z between 0 and 5. This scalar field is intended to measure the pressure in a rotating cylindrical drum oriented along the x-axis. The pressure here increases towards the edge of the drum, but decreases as the height in the drum increases, as you see with this z in the denominator. I've not shown the calculations of the derivatives, but here is the gradient. Where does it point? It points in the direction of the greatest pressure increase. And since the pressure is higher towards the outside of the cylinder, and also when z is lower, this vector points outward in x and y and downwards in z. And that matches the expectation given by the formula. Now let me do another calculation, one that you might find quite meaningful. This is an expression for the potential energy due to gravity on a small mass m located at a point x, y, z, caused by a large mass m located at the origin. The gradient is the vector of partial derivatives. It's a bit of a tedious calculation, which I've not shown here, it involves a chain rule and the square roots. But if I do the derivative and I factor out a common term, I get this vector as the gradient. If I write out this denominator a bit differently, isolating the square roots using the rules of exponents, I can write the expression this way. What does this mean? Well, the second piece here is a unit vector. It is a vector divided by its length. The length of x, y, z is the root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this piece has length one. This is just the direction of the gradient. And I can see that the direction on the input x, y, z is just x, y, z. So this is pointing directly outwards from the origin. The magnitude of this gr gradient is g little m uppercase m divided by this denominator. And this denominator, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, is just the distance squared between the little mass and the large mass. 
This is just R squared in terms of radius. So GMM over R squared, this is the conventional force of gravity. All right, this is gravity. What does that mean? It may or may not mean much depending on your background, but for those of you who have studied the physics of gravitation, you may wonder why the force of gravity shows up here. There is a principle in physics, at least in things like gravitation, that objects want to minimize their potential energy. The gradient, remember, is the direction of maximum increase. So the reverse of the gradient, the negative of the gradient, is the direction of maximum decrease. And this is where the object will go to minimize its potential energy. The force of gravity does exactly this. And forces in these kind of systems can be determined by gradients of energy, as long as the system is governed by this principle of minimizing potential energy. The gradient of the potential energy, with a negative to minimize instead of maximize, calculates the force of gravity, shows how the gravity will act on the object to try and minimize its potential energy. Finally, let me talk about operators and the gradient. The partial derivative symbols themselves, del over del x and so on, can be seen as a thing that takes derivatives. If I put these together into a vector, I get a vector of differential operators. This is the thing that takes gradients of a scalar field. If I apply this nabla to any field, the result is the gradient. I used this language of differential operator, operators in first year calculus, and it remains a very useful language here. Since this is a vector, a vector of operators, but still a vector, I can take the dot product. What happens here? If I take such a dot product and apply it to a function, I get the sum of each of the pure second partials. This is called the Laplacian of the function, and it is written this way, nabla squared. The Laplacian is quite an important operator. I've not talked much about differential equations in this course, but here are two of the most important differential equations in all of the theory. The first is the heat equation, and it governs the flow of heat in three dimensions. The second is the wave equation, and it governs the propagation of waves in three dimensions, such as, say, sound waves through the air. I don't need you to immediately understand this, since this is not a course on differential equations, but I wanted to make this connection between the gradient construction, this vector partial derivatives, the Laplacian, made out of a dot product of this vector, and then some of these extremely important physical processes, like heat flow and wave propagation, that all relate back to these derivative constructions that we're doing in the course in this week.